hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank 
scribes and the Pharisees and the others who heard him this day that we should throw out the Jewish laws and ignore, ignore the teachings of Moses. After all, as it says in the Deuteronomy passage, what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I'm setting before you today? Those laws are vital to the existence of the Jewish people under the Roman Empire. Jesus did not come to dismantle the law and the prophets. He says that himself in another place. And in his day, this law was so important to creating and protecting Jewish identity in the face of the Roman occupation. So then what is going on when the Pharisees and some of the scribes encounter him? Jesus sees them, sees into their hearts when they come to this question. The Pharisees and the scribes, by the way they frame the very question, it's clear they haven't come looking for dialogue. They haven't come to learn from this new rabbi. They've come to trip him up and to discredit him and his followers. They don't say, tell us about how you come together for meals. They ask, why don't you live according to the tradition of the elders? And there it is. The tradition of the elders. Not God's law, but tradition that has been handed down and added on top of what God gave them in the Deuteronomy and before. This washing ritual is not prescribed in any biblical text. It's tradition that has arisen and later on. And the Pharisees and the scribes want to use it to divide and keep people out, even within their own religious and ethnic group. That's the thing that Jesus names as hypocritical. Rituals and traditions are beautiful and powerful. We are gathered this morning and delivering this sermon to you in the context of worship deeply steeped with ritual, because it speaks to our hearts. Because it's been passed down to us by our elders, and we hope to pass it on to our children and our children's children. But if we make the ritual the thing, the center of what we think our life in Christ is, we're missing what it means to follow Jesus. Jesus didn't come to help us get our rituals right. He didn't come to help us figure out which prayer book or hymn we should be using, where we should put the candles on the altar, what time we should come to church. He came to turn our hearts. And at least for this recovering teacher pleaser, the <laughs> bad news is that following him isn't about checking off accomplishments or customs on a list. Guys, there's not going to be a report card at the end of this. Hand washing, master, pot washing, needs improvement, ritual practice, master, prayer book knowledge, on grade level. That's not what it will be like when we come to the end of our journey with Christ. Instead, following Jesus is much, much more free and a much more terrifying project. We can't prove we've accomplished it by doing the right things at church. Instead, we come here to commit to it and to keep that commitment returning day after day after day. By recognizing all that those evil intentions that Jesus named do indeed live within each one of us. We don't pretend that we are somehow above or better than that description of the human heart that Jesus gives just because we've got good rituals here. We are honest with ourselves about the things from within that divide. To follow Jesus, we admit that evil within ourselves, we repent when we fall into it, and we commit again and again to disciplining ourselves, to following this example of mercy and compassion. As another passage says, people look out for that outwardly appearances, 
but God judges the heart. Jesus never tells the scribes and the Pharisees to stop washing their hands or their pots or their cups or their kettles or their apples from the market. And I am confident that is not the message he sent me to deliver in 2021 with the Delta variant roaring outside. It's just that hand washing and shiny kettles aren't going to save us. So please, Wash your hands. And while you do, give thanks to God for the gift of water. Wash your hands and offer a prayer to your vulnerable neighbor who you might be protecting. Wash your hands and remember you were baptized into the living Christ. Wash your hands. Turn your heart and follow Jesus into eternal life. Let us stand and affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being the Father, through him all things remain, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and conscious of it. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, and in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe. Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through our hearts. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all be Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of the word of the sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our words may not appear in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let the light of the perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son as his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have not done now. We have not loved you in our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name.
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Jesus, be 
unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever.
Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now, remain with you always. Amen. Amen.